Hi, my name is Felicia Davis, and I'm an associate professor at Penn State University in the Stuckman School for Architecture, Landscape Architecture, and Graphic Design. I'm also the director of Soft Lab, which is housed within the Stuckman Center for Design Computing, and I also have my own firm called Felicia Davis Studio. And I'm here today with Design Milk for DMTV Milkshake. So they give me a number of questions and I'm just going to mix them up here. So the first one is, can you tell us more about the work of the Black Reconstruction Collective and any projects with which it's now engaged which you find most valuable? So I would say the most valuable thing that um, I um, think the Black Reconstruction Collective is, is doing is a, addressing the project of black emancipation, which at this day and age is incomplete. Um, and I think that for me, um, that's what I see as its most important mission. And uh, that mission uh, really, we are trying to support by providing funding to other artists, architects, designers, scholars, whose work is about um, the black diaspora and whose work will produce new knowledge on this kind of larger project of black emancipation and blackness. So um, the other thing that we do in terms of providing support is also intellectual. So as a group, um, you know, we're interested in inviting people, uh, having people, having open forums so that um, this project can be discussed at its fullest, right? Now that we've finished, you know, there are 10 of us engaged in this right now. And um, now that we've got work that is kind of up for discussion and debate in MoMA, uh, which we can all see, and it's, it's wonderful to see each other's work, but now that we can all see, uh, we're currently having a kind of open conversation about the themes that connect, intersect, um, and kind of weave through um, what is now there in the Reconstructions exhibition at MoMA. So you'll see um, that discussion live and probably be asked to join that discussion uh, over the next uh, few months. The other thing that the Black Reconstruction Collective is doing so we're not only sort of thinking about supporting um, people's projects but also making more projects we are um, on the verge <laughs> i'll say of starting what i'll call the unmonuments project a project about monuments and blackness uh, in the united states so um, that will be forthcoming as well so next question. Tell us about the work you find most exciting at Soft Lab at PSU. So as I mentioned, um, Soft Lab is a lab where we develop computational textiles um, at Penn State and computational textiles are textiles which have sensors, microcontrollers, and other electronics interwoven or embedded in the fibers and fabric um, that we make to communicate information to people. And we're most excited about looking at natural materials now um, that also have properties that um, in their transformation can communicate information to people. So really there has been in the last, I would say five years, an explosion of people looking at um, biodegradable microcontrollers, for example, that we can include uh, in our work. And so we're really excited to be able to make pieces that are sustainable and think about how we can make pieces that are, um, you know, have less impact uh, on, on our sort of, um, I would say on our kind of <sighs> footprint in the globe. And the other thing I would say that we're very excited about is 
Um, the fact that now, five years or so in, we are starting to have prototypes that work and have learned from um, what we have been doing all along, testing, 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 and are ready to connect with communities outside our lab to try out some of our pieces like wearable um, leggings or wearable tops. So we're really looking forward to um, understanding, you know, on specific bodies, in specific places, how the pieces that we've designed, how they work and, and get some feedback on that and begin to um, kind of get a feedback loop going. So um, we're very, very excited about having a conversation and also engaging communities that are not um, typically engaged with um, projects, you know, wearing leggings, et cetera, um, that are typically not engaged uh, in um, a project like a wearable. Often what you see happening in projects like wearable is they're kind of tested in communities that already are kind of saturated with technologies, have access to many different levels of technology. So um, we're very, very interested in, in connecting with kind of broadening um, the bandwidth of who who gets connected to uh, in 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 the kind of experiments that we're doing. So last question. You said there's a kind of technological redlining repeated in the cyber world. Can you tell us more about that? Yes. So the technological red line, I think, has a kind of dual reading. On the one hand, it makes people hyper visible. And on the other hand, it makes them invisible. And this has really been a kind of um, problem that, or I, I wouldn't say, well, yeah, we'll call it a problem that has kind of plagued um, the black population in the United States for, you know, since its founding. On the one hand, if you talk about, um, let's start with invisibility, you know, many people are working with AI and machine learning and facial recognition technology to be this kind of open sesame, uh, you know, the thing that allows you past the front door, for example, uh, that now, um, you know, it was discovered and, and written about and documented in Joy Bulawomi's work, who's done some really amazing work with that. Um, that, you know, a lot of these algorithms did not work for people of color, for black faces. And this is literally because, you know, when they were developing the technology for cameras, that when they were kind of setting that up, what is a good reading for a camera? You know, this was done with cards and, and the card had on it a picture of a white woman. So, so you know, the, the kind of settings that, the kind of standard settings that got embedded into technologies for cameras that then later gets picked up in the algorithms really becomes problematic for those people that have um, darker skin. And so, you know, this is Joy Bulawomi's work. And I think that, you know, on the one hand, you're invisible, but in terms of this line, on the other hand, you're hyper visible as a black person. Um, we're all familiar with the kind of over surveil surveillance that happens in black neighborhoods. You know, there are tons and tons of surveillance cameras and technological devices to, you know, see if there's gunshots going off in the neighborhood, et cetera, um, that really, I think, uh, overexpose black folk to uh, the camera and to being watched. And so I call that technological redlining, which is both something that is hyper visibility and at the same time invisible. So it's a, it's a very interesting condition that makes a kind of um, weird uh, boundary condition.